A very good afternoon, good morning, welcome to HYCM's live trading workshop with myself, Giles Cochran. A very warm welcome to you. I'm glad you could make it for this session. We will, of course, be looking at the Bank of Canada interest rate decision meeting, and I will be showing you what the key outlooks are as we get ready for that event. As we start, if you could just let me know that you could see my screen and hear my voice okay, that would be much appreciated. You just use the chat and the question box to let me know that I'm coming through A-OK -okay in terms of sound and visuals. And don't forget, as we go through the session, you can ask various questions as we go. So very warm welcome to you, Ignatius. Good to have you here. Amir, Aaron, good to have you. Sam, excellent. Uh, I'm glad folks could make it here. Right, good. Without further ado, uh, let's sort of start moving towards our session start. Now, don't forget, as we look at different entries, exits, the whole idea of this trading webinar workshop is uh, that you look over my shoulder, someone with a professional trading background, and you see how I go about making trading decisions. It isn't a signal trading service. So even though we talk about different entries, exits, stops, take profits, et cetera, et cetera, it's not from a trading signal service perspective, but it's from an educational perspective. Remember that as we're um, trading, we're looking to back the strong against the weak. That's a key concept that you need to grasp. If you just look at this image, it does begin to convey the important aspect that you need to know. If you uh, had to guess which of these arms would rim, win the arm wrestle, you'd think, well, the big arm's going to win the arm wrestle, right? because it's much stronger than the little arm. Now, they're both muscular guys, right? But one arm is much, much bigger uh, than the other. So you think, well, the big strong arm will win. So if you had to bet which one would win, then you'd always look to back the strong against the weak. So that's what we're doing when we're trading. We're backing a strong currency against a weak currency. And that's the principle that we're going to take as we look at trading the Bank of Canada rate decision. We want to see opportunities for CAD strength or weakness. You know, what decisions would the Bank of Canada have to make in order for that to be true? OK, how will the Bank of Canada trade those rate decisions? Um, how will the CAD function? after the Bank of Canada decision? That's the key question and the key answer that we need to make. And that's what I'm going to explain to you. Now, one of the key things of trading is you have to know what the expectations are. Now, if I said to you, we're going to meet on Saturday, and when you come to my house, I'm going to take you on a trip to London, and we're going to see Tower Bridge, and we're going to have, we're going to have tea at Claridge's. You think, wow. I can't wait to go to Giles's house on Saturday because we've got a really nice day planned. But imagine when you arrived, instead of going to London and instead of going to Claridge's, I took you to a, lo a local supermarket cafe. Well, you'd feel disappointed. Not because I took you to a supermarket cafe per se, but because I didn't take you to London and I didn't take you to Claridge's. Of course you'd feel disappointed. Why? But yes, Aaron, exactly. The sentiment. What are you expecting? Aaron's just said sentiment in the chat question box, and that's exactly right. So, what is the sentiment coming into the Bank of Canada rate decision? Here we go. So, according to the stir markets, short term interest rate markets, they are expecting a 100% chance of a 50 basis point rate hike. So, know this straight away. It's going to be no surprise if the Bank of Canada hike by 50 basis points. That's what's expected. So if it's a 50 basis point rate hike, what then comes into focus is the forward guidance. So 50 basis point rate hike is expected. So straight away, we can see the expectations. A 25 basis point hike would be a bearish surprise. 75 basis points would be bullish. We'll get into the different outcomes at the end of this presentation. But this is just introducing what the basic sentiment that's expected is. Now, something else you need to look at is how is Canada's economy doing? Now, if you remember Canada, uh, not remember, it's obvious, but Canada is bordering the US. And unsurprisingly, 
The US is Canada's largest trading partner. Nearly three quarters of all Canada's trade takes place with the US. So that means uh, that not only is Canada's economy important, but so is the US economy. Now, if you look at these GDP projections, you can see that Canada's economy is projected to grow to 4.3% in the second quarter of 2022. Very strong growth. And it is the strongest growth out of the UK, Eurozone, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, and the US. And notice that the US is expected to have the second strongest GDP growth. So that is a further boost for Canada. And of course, you haven't got to follow the markets very long to realize that oil prices have been surging on tight supply and more recently a weak dollar. And Canada exports huge amounts of oil. And any uptick in oil prices is a further support for Canada. So growth is good in Canada. So the outlook is strong. Also, look at the house prices. Now, the high house price index is above 2006 levels. Huge gains. All of that has been supported by the quantitative easing. And all of that has been huge amounts of monetary supply that's just kept Canada's, as with the rest of the world, housing market very high. Now, this means a couple of things. First of all, if interest rates go up very quickly, all the people that bought houses at the top of that curve will find servicing that debt more and more tricky. Of course, when you take a mortgage, right, you either take a variable rate mortgage or you take a fixed rate mortgage. Now, um, the people, sensible people would have taken a fixed rate mortgage who wants to seal in that, that interest rate deal, but eventually those fixed rate terms come to an end. You could have a one year, two year, four year, five year. In the UK, you struggle to get more than the five year fixed rate. So eventually, you know, if interest rates keep rising, then those interest rates uh, just, you know, those terms uh, get harder and harder. So house prices are high in Canada. That could potentially put the pressure on uh, those who are having to pay higher payments. Also, Canada's jobs market is outperforming that of the US. So in the US, uh, employment is not doing too bad, but if you notice, the jobs haven't gone back to the pre-COVID levels. Now, part of the reason for that in the US is that people took opportunity to take early retirement and not, uh, you know, and not come back to work after COVID. Whereas in the in Canada, the way the Can Canadian government supported uh, its uh, companies was by providing companies to pay individuals. So companies kept individuals on their payroll, whereas in the US, the government paid individuals directly. So you can see that gap. Before COVID-19, you can see that Canada and US jobs were quite similar. And then afterwards, Canadian jobs have done much better. The Canadian jobs market has outperformed the US, and that's mainly due to policy, right? But what it means is that Canada's jobs market is good, there is about a million jobs vacancies still there. That puts pressure on wages. And I was reading that one a major jobs uh, data collector in Canada was expecting jobs wage price data to increase by 3.5%, up to potentially 5%. So there's inflation potentially in wages. So that puts pressure on the Bank of Canada. Now, remember what I said about the biggest trade partner for Canada being US. Look at the projections. Now I got this um, data from some of the great analysts over at Financial Source who I work with. Uh, Arno put together a great presentation and some of these slides are from that presentation. So credit to uh, Financial Source uh, and Arno Venter. But if you just take a look here at this Canadian and US projections, the dotted line, Markets are expecting the growth of the US to drop. And if drop, growth drops for the US, it drops for Canada. Do you see here? If you look, when you see US growth dropping, you see Canadian growth dropping. You see how two are in quite close parallel uh, with one another. 
Um, and, you know, if anything, you can see the Canadian uh, curve is a little bit more responsive than the US uh, curve, a little bit of a faster responder. So the fact that Canadian growth expectations are starting to drop under US growth expectations is indicative of a potential dip coming in Canadian growth. So now do you see the issue? At, see, now look, at the moment, the Canadian GDP is good, house prices are high, jobs are good, but in the future, growth is expected to slow. Now do you see what might happen at the Bank of Canada interest rate decision? You might get the Bank of Canada start to say, look, we're worried about GDP growth. So yes, we've hiked by 50 basis points, but they might start saying, but growth is worrying us, or we'll hike by 50 basis points now, but maybe we're worried about the housing market, that if we hike interest rates too quickly, the people that bought houses when they're expensive are going to struggle with their repayments. They might say, look, the US growth is expected to slow, and with rising oil prices, we're concerned that that's going to weigh on the US growth expectations because inflation is going to bite harder than we thought. So if the Bank of Canada hike by 50 basis points but talk about slowing growth risks, then you could see the CAD weaken out of the decision. Right? Um, now there's a couple of um, you know things to look at. So first of all, like Euro CAD, right? Now, if we got a 25 basis point hike, I would be buying EuroCAD at market or the Aussie CAD at market. Okay, if it was 25 basis points high, because if it was 25 basis points, it would be a surprise to the downside. If the bank hike by 50 basis points and confirms another hike, but is cautious on thinking, saying like, well, you know, back to back rate hikes isn't guarantee, you know, we may be cautious going forward. Then I expect more CAD weakness, Euro CAD, Aussie CAD upside. If they talk about growing risk of a growth slowdown, Euro CAD, Aussie CAD upside. And if they mention the possibility of pausing hikes if financial conditions squeeze consumers too much, remember the high price, price high, how high house price issue, that would be Euro CAD, Aussie CAD upside. So what you can see here, and I hope you can see this, is that if the uh please excuse the ecb rate meeting that's a mistake it should say bank of canada rate meeting in fact let me just let me just get rid of that so it's uh we've got the uh ecb rate meeting next week but i'll explain why i'll explain why that um it's euro cad and the aussie cad <clears throat> now there's upside bias for euro there's upside bias for aussie why? The ECB. Christine Lagarde has said that she expects the ECB to hike by 25 basis points in July and September. But just today, we had out news that uh, ECB Holtzman says that because inflation is high, that there might be a 50 basis points rate hike ahead. Now, let me show you this on the, let me show you on, on a professional news terminal. So you look here, you look at yesterday, 31st of May, right? Look at the ECB. Do you see the inflation data? See, it came in at 8.1%. That was higher than the 7.7% expected and the 7.4% prior and higher than, and, and the same level as the high expectation. So that meant, right? that earlier on in the session we had uh, this comment from ecb holtzman let me just uh, put this out see ecb holtzman says the record eurozone inflation print back to the need for a 50 basis point rate hike okay now i went long in the euro pound on the basis of that and I put this up on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you're following me on Twitter. I'll put my name in the, the chat box and I'll show you 
that is my Twitter handle there. Um, and you'll see here that I tweeted this out at the time, okay? And I said, look, your ECB Holtzman repeat calls for 50 basis point rate hike. See, this was 9.30 a.m. this morning. Euro pound upside bias at market ahead of ECB next week. Stern markets up, yada, yada, yada. And then I put that, uh, that long bias uh, trade that I made uh, earlier this morning, right? So that's why we've got this Euro pound upside bias. Also got this Aussie CAD upside bias. I entered long Aussie CAD as price moved around this area. There's a little technical setup where long Aussie CAD price moving higher into the meeting. That's nothing to trade now. You've got to wait now for the BOC decision. But there is a euro pound upside bias at market stops just below 0.8476 or 0.8450. Okay, that's a medium term upside bias that is, um, you know, in play right now. Euro CAD is very interesting. We get a dovish BOC, then look at this trend line break retest. If you get a very dovish Bank of Canada, then Euro CAD at market makes sense. That would be a lovely area to define risk just below that 1.3500 area. Yeah. Yeah, I told that in previous web webinar because of inflation, ECB can go more hawkish. Aaron, good man, well done for recognizing that, you see. Now, I'll give you a little bit of an extra tip. Now, I was confident that that was gonna be a high print, and I'll tell you why, and this is just a little bit more learning for you, right? Because the German inflation had come in high the previous day. Now, let me show you. If you have a look here, there was some German, yeah, you see the German, you see the German inflation rate on Monday, Aaron? Do you see how it came in hot? 7.9. So the maximum expectation was 7.7, .7, came in 7.9. Maximum 8.7, high expect was 8.5, right? So that, that told me, hang on, inflation is a real headache, right? Germany is the biggest, like, mover in Europe. Yeah, that's right, abnormal return. So what these are, these are economists' expectations. So when the, the report is above the highest economist or analyst's expectation, that tells you it's, as you put it, abnormal, it's out of the range, it's, it's newsworthy, and that's not priced in, crucially. So that just allows markets to, to rise. So that puts the pressure on the ECB. Now, in one sense, in one sense, look, the eurozone inflation is not going to, wasn't going to change the ECB's mind, right? But it puts pressure on. So euro pound upside makes sense. So I entered in a couple of extra positions today on that. Now it's slightly speculative, right? But bottom line, euro pound upside does make sense. And then it's just about managing your risk, where do you put your stops, et cetera, et cetera. The other things that was noteworthy that gave the risk sentiment positive was these Chinese data points. That shows that it was not as bad as expected the slowdown in China. Remember the problem that China's had with high COVID cases, with China's zero COVID policy. Do check out my blog. Um, I've written extensively on my blog uh, about China. And you can read all about that and you can these two posts, this the last chance to turn bullish on China and why is China holding on its COVID zero plan? Like they are both really worth reading. Okay, so make sure you you get up to speed and read those. Um, and a couple of things to note today is we have ECB's Panetta and ECB's Lane speaking, and Christine Lagarde speaking. Right now, I don't know what Christine Lagarde has said. Let's just see. Let's see if I've got anything from Lagarde, the president of the ECB, of course. Um, right, nothing, nothing from her yet. I can see. Um, but you've got Penetta speaking as well, right? And the interest decision at three o'clock UK time. So that's one hour and ten minutes. Okay, folks. Um, 
nice Aussie cad still, you know, really pushing that. Yeah, so what's boosting the Aussie, so that's where I was at, is the positive sentiment from China, okay? So we had three positive sentiment things. One, Chinese services and PMI is good. Two, we had Australia's GDP, which is good, okay? That means the RBA, when they meet next Tuesday, they're on track to hike interest rates. The tax in manufacturing PMI, that's the private manufacturing PMI, was okay, you know, just around forecast, nothing problem, no problem with that. And that's all boosted upside for the Aussie, right? And that's why, like, we were confident today to go long Aussie CAD on that positive sentiment into the meeting. Now, okay, got a good run on this into the meeting, so I'll be able to move my stops just to break even and then see what happens in the decision, okay? Maybe take half the position off, we'll see. Um, but otherwise, now let's do the other scenario, which the other scenario is that the Bank of Canada are really hawkish, okay? And so they hike by 75 basis points and they put the neutral rate higher. So in other words, if they suddenly say, look, we've got to hike by 75 basis points to control inflation, our economy is strong, we can take it. Now expect US dollar CAD to sink rapidly lower. And one te technique you can use is just selling US dollar CAD on stop. So you look at, So look at dollar CAD. You could potentially just put a sell on stop order 30 points below price at just a few seconds before the decision. Then if there is a 75 basis points rate hike, you'd expect this dollar CAD to fall down to 1.25, 1.2450. And you could just take profit as you approach that level. Okay. Yes, Aaron, Aussie CAD is best example for trading strong against weak. It is. Um, it's just that the, the CAD, it's not that the CAD is weak, it's just that the CAD is, is going quite close to its peak bullishness. Do you know what I mean? And if we get some weakness, then the Aussie CAD could really fly, but also the Euro CAD as well. So look out for that uh, as, we, as we push uh, further into the session. Okay, my friends, uh, I hope that's been helpful. I hope you, I'll just go through the, uh, the things to look at. These are the kind of expectations. And don't forget, we'll be coming getting ready next week. Now, next week, we've got the RBA meeting and the ECB meeting. And next Wednesday, I'll run through the ECB meeting, just like I've done with the Bank of Canada rate meeting. We'll get ourselves totally ready for it, okay? Folks, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Aaron, for all your questions. It's been good questions. And thank you all very much for attending. Please do enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, please do follow along at Twitter. Thank you, Aaron. You're very welcome. It's been my pleasure. Please have a very good rest of your session. Thanks, everyone, now. Goodbye. <laughs>